Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a card with you where I use two of my favorite Avery L stamp sets. One stamp set I used a couple years ago and the other one I believe was actually my second YouTube video ever. But I had this idea rolling around in my head for a while and I really just wanted to sit down and stamp it out with really no expectation on how it would turn out. I just simply wanted to make it. I did this about a month ago and I'm just now getting around to sharing it with you. Okay, so this is the Avriel Butterfly stamp set. This is hands down my most favorite ever. And I also think what is so endearing about this particular stamp set is the illustrator for it is a self-taught artist. Not only is she a wonderful card maker and a great person, but she is a self-taught. So when I hear folks say that they're not artistic at all or they can't be artistic, I actually think about this stamp set every time. You never know what you're gonna achieve. That is the Avriel Floral Bouquet stamp set. I will have the video to that a link down in the description below. In the meantime, let's get started here on this card. So the paper I'm using today is actually Copic sketch paper. This comes out of an 11 by 14 inch sketchbook. It's specifically de designed to be used with Copic markers. And I've just trimmed it down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half. I have my butterfly placed where I know it's gonna be over the top of one of those flowers. I'm stamping it in Alta New Permanent Black ink. Now I'm putting in that big bouquet of flowers back over the top of that first butterfly that I have masked off. And I'm gonna put one of the smaller ones on top of that so I can get my placement right I can see right through that stamp down to that butterfly below and I just want to make sure that my spacing is going to be pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect I just want to make sure that these are spread out okay now I'm going to put that butterfly right over the top of that bouquet and I'm just picking up that butterfly I'm going to remove that bouquet then I'm going to ink that up and stamp that now I need a third one on there I'm going to do the same thing I put that bouquet right back down and I can pretty much remember where I have that bouquet lined up every time so I'm getting it pretty close to the same when I put put it back down each time. Now I'm ready to stamp that bouquet in one of those little butterflies and I do have all of my butterflies masked off there. So right now it's gonna look like a mess, but that's okay, I'm just gonna stick with it and definitely stick with it. It'll all work out in the end, folks. So I have another mask of that bouquet. I have this just cut out on plain copy paper. I have some temporary adhesive on the back of it. I got super lazy, didn't feel the need to cut out a big mask out of masking paper, and this works just fine. Now I'm gonna move that bouquet up, and it is hanging off the edge there. I am trying to be a little bit careful because I don't wanna pinch it in that hinge, but it's fine that it's hanging over the edge. I'll stamp that, and then I'm gonna take a couple of the smaller flowers and add those two. I really want this corner to be nice and full. So I'm stamping a couple of the smaller ones. I'll stamp a couple of these leaves. And then I needed a few more of those little sprigs sticking out. They, they, I suppose they could have berries on them. I am going to make them look like berries. But I needed one more of those because I knew that I wanted these to be colored red and I needed that red to balance out. So I'm just gonna mask off these leaves here. I kinda have a mishmash of masks because I had used these stamp sets before. So I'm just reusing my old ones. I didn't have to really cut out anything new with the exception of that floral bouquet. So I'm gonna mask off these leaves because I want that, those little berries to go right in between there. And then I need one more butterfly. You could actually leave this one off. I wanted this guy on there because I was thinking I needed five butterflies. I really wanted that odd number, but you could totally leave him off. It, it's gonna seem like it's really funny because he's so big in comparison to that little one, but that's it's fine. It works totally works out in the end once they're all colored in. So now I pulled off all those masks. I gotta tell you folks, these masks for these butterflies are really tricky to hang on to. So don't be surprised if you end up having to pitch them in the trash because they don't survive. It's totally fine. So now that I have all of my masks pulled off, I am gonna take an eraser. I'm gonna go over the top of these because I don't want any of that residue on my paper. It'll definitely ruin my Copic markers and I don't wanna do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in these butter butterflies and I'm using YR31, YR24, and YR18. I want these to be a little bit on the orange side because I already knew that I wanted to 
color in those berries red and I knew that I was going to color in the flowers a blue green so to complement that I am coloring in all of the butterflies in, in the orange this orange combination you could definitely mix the colors up you could you could certainly mix up the colors of all of these flowers there's plenty of them you don't have to color them all in one color I did it for ease of use because there is so many of them but you could definitely mix these up. You could probably even figure out a way to incorporate some sort of rainbow and all of that I, and all of this. I think that would be really cool. So to start with, I'm just kind of mapping out where my shadow is going to go. I know that I want these butterflies' wings to look like they're bending, like they're they're bowing a little bit. I don't want them to look like they're in motion. I just want them to look like they have a little bit of shape to them. So I mapped it out with the YR31. Now I'm bringing in the YR18 and I'm going in my darkest shadow areas. I'm not extending it past to where I had any of that YR31. These wings actually aren't that big and I definitely want to keep enough highlight there that the, that the wings still pop. They need to look like they have enough light in order to pop off this background. This blue green is going to go pretty dark so I need these butterflies to really stand out to help reinforce the idea that these have these wings have some shape to them I'm going to keep that center highlight right there pretty much right in the center of each of these the pieces to this wing so I have the YR18 down there in the center closest to the body and then I'm also bringing some in from the tips of the wings towards the body and right there in the center I'm going to leave the most of that pretty light pretty much on the light side I guess I'm also making sure that that YR18 the two wings on the right and the left they're closest to the top part of the body I'm stretching that YR18 out up towards the tip a little bit that is also going to help reinforce that it has a little bit more shape to it there's a little bit uh, more movement so to speak so the wings aren't moving but your eye sees it as moving away from you. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm bringing in the YR24 and I'm just going to fill in some of that white space. This doesn't have to be perfect. I am going to be bringing in some colored pencils. Now I know y'all are probably like she cannot get enough colored pencils lately. This is actually the second card uh, that I had made that I started getting my colored pencils back out again this is kind of what really got it going by the time I was done doing this card just with my Copics I sat there looking at it thinking you know what this just wasn't ex I wasn't quite getting what I wanted out of it then I remembered I had my colored pencils so that's kind of where all of that came from so anyway all right moving on I colored the other two butterflies the same way. Now these two are a little bit different because they're different shape. Now they're both pretty much the same shape, but they're different shapes from the other butterflies. This one, I actually stretch out quite a bit more of that YR18 than what I really need to. You could probably leave a little bit more white space. I just figured since he was so big in comparison to the other ones, I could afford to add a little bit more shadow on him. So that's what I did. I am making sure that the wing that's on the top and the wing that's on the bottom it gets some highlight or I'm sorry some shadow that runs so the one on the bottom it would have shadow that runs up alongside the middle wing and the one on the top has shadow that runs along the top of the middle wing so those look like they actually set back so they look like they're three separate wings on this butterfly hopefully you're following along here if not, you'll see more of what I'm talking about as soon as I start adding more detail with colored pencil. So I colored in the berries next because I needed to separate them. At this point, there's enough going on here. I need to be able to separate these images in my mind so I don't color anything in the wrong color. So the first thing that jumps out to me are those berries. I did some really lazy coloring and I colored those in with an R29. I do add more detail to those later so you don't even notice that I colored them in with a just one Copic but we'll talk about that more here pretty soon. The next thing I'm going to start coloring in is these leaves. Those are the next thing that stand out to me. So in order for my eye to be able to make sense of the scene I'm going to color them all in at once and get them out 
out of the way. So that should only leave me with the flowers after that. And then I can, I can actually see what I'm doing. This actually is a fairly decent amount of coloring. There are quite a few flowers on this. You definitely don't need to stamp the bouquet this many times or add this many flowers. You could probably even stamp the bouquet itself once right on your card panel, maybe in the lower left, uh, stamp three of those, those smaller butterflies there and call it good. That would save you a ton of time. I just really wanted to build this up. I had, that's the idea that I had in my head that I really needed to build up all of those flowers and I don't mind taking the time to color them in. So that's why I decided to do it this way. But again, you don't, certainly don't have to. I started with a G12 and I mapped those out. Again, I'm trying to keep them all separated uh, in my mind to my eye so I can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm bringing in the G29 and I'm going in the darkest shadow areas. I think if I were to redo these leaves, I actually wouldn't add any of this G29 to the tips of those. But I, I thought at the time, yeah, it made sense. But if again, if I were to do it again, I would just leave the G29 off the tips of them. Okay, so once I'm done with all of the G29, I'm going to bring in a G19. I actually didn't even need to use this. In fact, you're going to see my G19 start to bleed on my card panel here in just a moment. And I'll show you what I do to take care of that. When you're coloring with Copic markers, you can, you actually get a little bit of a clue that your marker is going to start bleeding. I wasn't paying attention. I was just simply trucking along here coloring. But if you're paying close enough attention, you can actually see when it's going to start to bleed. It's, it's, you start to see more of the marker pull up at the tip of, of the marker and you can sometimes catch that before it happens. I didn't quite do that. What I did was I picked my card panel up right away, tipped it over on my grid pad and allowed some of that grid pad to soak up my Copic. Now I'm bringing in a colorless blender and I'm pushing that marker in towards that green. I'm not going to do it a whole bunch. I'm going to push it in there a little bit. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to go back and do that a couple more times. I only need to do it about twice more and then I'm going to leave it because again, I know that I'm going to be coloring these in in a blue green so I actually don't need to worry about it too much. I just wanted to get it lightened up a little bit because I still wasn't quite sure where some of my highlights and shadows were going to fall in those flowers and I didn't want green highlights. If you need to get up more of it, then you would just keep going back with your colorless blender until you get it as light as you can possibly get it. Just make sure that it's drying in between layers there. Okay, so now I'm gonna start coloring in my flowers and I'm only gonna show you this one flower. All of them are colored in the same. I didn't vary my techniques at all because there's so many of them, there's no need to do that. I just simply wanted to get the color down. I did want them to look like they have a little bit of shape so these petals are pulling backwards, they're bending, and they have, again, a little bit of movement just like those butterfly wings. That's all that was important to me. I kept everything else the same. So I'm showing you the BG32, BG45, and a BG49. I actually end up switching gears after this flower. It's the same technique, just different colors. I end up bringing in a BG32 to map out my shadows. Then I go in with a BG18 and do what I'm doing right now with this BG49. And then I actually end up blending it out with a BG45. That actually ends up being my lightest color. I think I probably could have just stuck with this color combination to begin with, the BG32, 45, and 49. I just felt like it wasn't quite dark enough. So that's why I brought in the BG18. And BG18 is a little bit darker than the BG49. But I think I still could have left it. As it turned out, I bring in colored pencils and I make them all quite a bit darker anyways. I want these shadows to be pretty deep. These flowers are laying on top of each other and then we have the butterflies on top of that. I wanted all of this image to read like it had a lot of dimension. Like there is a pretty solid flower or a pile of flowers here and these butterflies are 
are nesting it or just chilling on these flowers. So I kept thinking that I needed to go darker and darker. And I think with the Copics, I just wasn't quite getting it. Also, I feel that BGs are a little tricky and I only actually only have so many BGs in my Copic collection. Surprisingly enough, I only have so many. So I kind of have to make it work with what I have. Now, I do know that you can bring in... Um, your, some of your gray markers. You can bring in a cool a C5 would be great on this. I just wanted it to be a little bit deeper yet than that. So I'm bringing in my colored pencils now, and this is actually an indigo. So this is a blue, uh, more of a blue violet, but it's fine. It'll work just fine with these blue greens. I'm actually going to be bringing in another blue green as well as uh, a cool gray 90% uh, Prismacolor pencil. And between those, I can really build up that depth and dimension. The other thing is, is I have my pencil very sharp. I'm making sure that I'm keeping these super duper sharp. I need to get into those nooks and crannies of these petals so it does look like they're on top of each other and they're kind of mixed together there and the shadows really stand out. So I need to make sure that I have a nice sharp point to, to my pencil. And I'm not using a lot of pressure because this is a blue pencil on a blue green flower. I don't want it to read blue. I just need it to read dark. So I'm using a very, very light hand. I'm going in very tight circular motions, making sure that it has a really good coverage. And I'm sticking real close to those darkest shadow areas with that particular color. Now I'm going to be bringing in a blue green. I can't remember off the top of my head which color that was. I will have those linked down below as well as over on my blog if you're interested in these colors. So I'm bringing in that blue green and I'm going just over the top of the indigo. Once I have all of that blended out and I'm stretching it out just a little bit more. Once I have all that blended out, now I'm going to bring in this cool gray. This is 90%. It's pretty dark. This would be the darkest one right before you get to a black Prisma color. You could maybe go a little bit less lighter than this, but again, I'm really, really trying to reinforce those shadows. Now these four flowers up here at the top, I saved those for last and then started recording it. So everything below my hand right now, everything below these four, four flowers up here, those have already been colored in with colored pencil. I've also done some of the colored pencil work on those butterflies, but I do show you here in just a moment what I did with those. Again, that's pretty easy. And surprisingly enough, I still end up using that cool gray 90% and it still looks gorgeous on those orange colors. So I just want to make sure that everything is blended out really well. I am not covering up all of that Copic coloring. I know somebody asked me last week if, or a couple weeks ago, if I color up all of the, uh, the Copic coloring. Sometimes yes. This one, no. I am leaving all of that highlight uncolored with colored pencil. So on the butterflies, I'm taking this cool gray 90% and I'm just reinforcing closest to the body with it. Again, a super duper light hand, folks. You don't need a heavy hand. These are dark colors and even with a light hand, it's still going to show up dark. So super light. Blend those out really, really lightly. And I'm also going where some of that shape is, those uh, on the butterfly wings, the, the largest portion of the wings, I'm kind of reinforcing some of that shadow in there so that it looks like it has a little bit more texture texture and movement, movement into those wings. And then I blend that out with an orange colored pencil just a wee bit so it doesn't read quite so gray. Okay, so now I'm using a Derwent drawing pencil. This is the Chinese white. I just simply grabbed this because it was there. I honestly recommend that you use a Prismacolor Premier White colored pencil. You this, this pencil can be very, very tricky. It is exceptionally opaque. It almost feels... Uh, it, it definitely feels different. I heard somebody describe it once like it's coloring with a bar of soap and that's legit folks. It's meant to go on very thick. It's meant to be used really uh, for like more stark applications. So if you want something to look super duper white and vibrant, this is a great pencil for that. I, if you're not familiar with that, if you're nervous at all with anything like that, if you're afraid that you're going to add too much to it, I would definitely not use this pencil. 
Uh, it's, it's something worth having in your stash, but it's not something I would reach for very often. Just so you know, you could still use a Prismacolor Premier White pencil. Now there is a bonus to using this kind of pencil. It, it, there's a little bit less work involved if you use it and you can lift some of this color with an eraser. That's just something to keep in mind. Again, I'm simply using it because that's what was closest to me. I went over all of my images, including those butterflies, the flowers, and then I called it good with the coloring. There is one more thing I need to do before I start adding the finishing touches, and that is add my cast shadow or drop shadow. I want this to look like it is definitely sitting here in the foreground and there's all of that space out there in the background. I'm gonna keep it nice and clean and white, but I need to have this cast shadow so it looks like there's more dimension and the, these are sitting mostly up front here. So if you're familiar with me at all, then you know what I'm using. If not, then I am using the C00, C1, C3, C5. I mapped it out with my C3. Now I'm bringing in my C5. And typically I tell you folks that I try to keep these lines really thin or really close to my images. I don't want them to spread out very much, but I'm actually going to spread these out quite a bit. I have a lot of white space here. This is a very, uh, very large scene given the size of my card here, and there is a lot of color. So I can afford it to stretch those lines out a little bit more and make these cast shadows pretty fat actually. So that's what I'm doing. I am making sure that my marker is more onto the side as opposed to just strictly using the tip of it. And I'm spreading those out pretty good. Once I was done with that C5, I went in with the C3, blended it out, and then I blended it out again with the C1. Now I'm using the C00. You could definitely stop at the C1. I like this combination, so I have a tendency to just keep going. I'm also making sure that I get those shadows in between some of those gaps in those flowers. There aren't many, but I definitely want to make sure I get those because I don't want any of that white sticking out there. And then once I have that done, I am bringing in my colorless blender and I'm going to diffuse these quite a bit. Now I probably could have gone back in and added quite a bit more of that C5, but it's fine. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to call it a day. You can still tell that I have a cast shadow on my images here and that's, that's just good. So I do bring in a white gel pen and I add these little white dashes to those berries and I vary them so it looks like the light is hitting them in different directions. Now I do make sure that I'm paying attention to the cast shadow. So if the cast shadow is at the bottom of the berry, I put that line, uh, that white line at the top of the berry and then it looks like those berries are dimensional. It looks like they have some shape to them and some the light is hitting them. I also use a white gel pen to add dots to the wings on on that butterfly that is at the right there, that large one at the far right. And then I'm going to take this gel pen and I'm going to go in the center of these flowers. Now, when I colored this in, I went over the insides of these flowers with complete disregard to what I was going to do with the stamen. However, I knew that I would be able to do this at the end and it works out just fine. So I go over all of those stamen on all of the flowers that have a, with a white gel pen. Now there's some of these that are actually the butterflies are covering them up and that's fine. You don't need to worry about, about it. Once I get done with them, I can go back and I'm going to add another color. I am being very careful to start on one section of my panel and work my way to the other side of my card panel. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to make sure that this gel pen dries before I move on. Now I am using a Uniball Signo. These have a tendency to dry pretty quickly, but I still want to make sure that it's good and dry because I'm going to go over it with this yellow Secura uh, clear or yellow let me try that again. Yellow Secura glaze pin, and I'm going right up over the top of it. Now these glaze pins, they have a ball in them. And if you hold them straight up and down, you push that ball down, you put the pressure on your paper, make sure that ball goes up inside the pin. 
and let it sit there for just a second, it will pool up. And when it dries, not as, not only does it dry to that beautiful glaze color, in this case it's yellow, but it actually dries in a perfect circle. I needed that white underneath it so when it dries back, you can actually see this yellow. If I had just gone over the yellow with uh, without that white underneath it, you wouldn't see it. It would mix into that blue green and it would just, it would be a total waste. Now, if you have a more opaque pen you could certainly use that but I love these clear these glaze pens I use them all the time I did add some nouveau aqua shimmer in the highlights of the flowers as well as the highlights of those butterflies wings and then I'm going to call that good as far as any glitter I don't think it needs much more than that there is one other thing that I would like to do to this before I call it a day and now I'm going to take a secure clear glaze pen and I'm going to go over the tops of those berries and the bodies of the butterflies because I really want those to have some texture to them and they do stand out a little bit when these pens dry dry back they do have a little bit of uh again texture they they stand up a little bit it's not a ton of dimension it's just enough that you could definitely see a difference now with these berries I have that white gel pen underneath that so I need to be careful of that it is dry but that clear glaze will reactivate it and if I move it around it'll actually start to smear so again it goes back to being able to use the ball of these glaze pens and I just tap it onto the surface and I can actually tap it in the shape that I need and it doesn't disturb any of that gel pen underneath it again I'm going to go over these bodies so they stand out a little bit and I'm being pretty careful to make sure that I don't get it where I don't want to. These glaze pens are actually pretty easy to use. They don't have a super fine point, but you can actually get into some pretty, pretty small areas with them. And I think that's really cool. Hopefully you can see what I mean by a little bit of texture and dimension there with those glaze pens. And it can make such a huge difference, I think, on your finished card. And there's just enough shimmer on this to say that it has a little bit of shimmer. And I think it's perfect. It totally bums me out anytime that I hear somebody say that they can't do something, they're not a good artist, they'll never be a good artist, they'll never be able to do any of these wonderful things because that's totally not true. Karen Davies is a self-taught artist and she learned how to illustrate these wonderful images and that's all she did was she had patience and she stuck with it and she learned how to do it on her own. That is it, folks. We are done. We are good to go. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.